Today I'm going to show you how to make this procedural jellyfish here. You might be looking at this thinking it doesn't really look quite like a jellyfish and uh, in some ways I think you're right. But I also wanted to balance realism with also making it an approachable project. So I wanted to try and introduce some cool new concepts while also making it not too hard to follow. So let's see how I did that. Let's start by deleting our default cube. Let's bring in a circle. Let's view this from the top, tap into edit mode, and just tap A a couple times just to make sure you have everything selected. Hit E to extrude and right click to, tr uh, to cancel that transform there. And then hit S and 0 to size everything into the middle. I could have merged everything, but I didn't want to because if I did, I wouldn't be able to make edge loops around this center point, which is what I'm going to do next. So let's go ahead and do that Control R and use the mouse wheel to scroll up until we have 12. You can see the number in the bottom left hand corner there. So once you have 12, left click and then right click to make sure that they stay in the original place. Let's split this window and open up our shader editor on the left. Let's go ahead and hit N to get rid of that shelf and hit new for a new material. Let's call this jellyfish, just like this. So this setup here, I learned it from a video that CG Cookie put out where he interviewed Simon Toms. That's essentially this whole setup here. It was a very long video, and I just wanted to show you this one part that I, I learned I really liked, so I took notes on it. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, Simon Toms setup, so thanks very much, Simon, uh, for putting this information out there. That was really great. So to start out, let's bring in a texture coordinate node, and then a separate XYZ, and just plug the object into the vector here. Let's create a math node here and let's change it to arctan2 and let's go ahead and plug the x into the top value and y into the bottom value. Let's go ahead and turn on rendered mode so we can see what's going on and come out of edit mode on the right there. Then let's bring in a map range node and put it right here and then let's bring in two more math nodes here. I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate these and we're going to change this first one to multiply and the second one to fraction. So to set these up, uh, we're going to change this value to 10 in the multiply and then this map range here, we need to extend this because right now it's only going about one-sixth of our total uh, circle there and we're going to set this first value to negative pi. So we can just hit the minus and then pi and it'll fill that in, and then the positive, it's going to be just regular pi, just like that. And now we can see it extends throughout the whole thing. So there's actually 10 segments, because we've got 10 right here. And we can see in each segment, it goes from 0, which is that black value, all the way to 1, which is that white value. So that repeats 10 times. And that's what this fraction node does here as well. If we were to take this out, it goes from 0 all the way to 10 and that's why it gets so bright. So to put this in here it helps break it up into sections from 0 to 1. If we were to uh, change this value as well we can see it doesn't quite extend throughout the whole circle so if we wanted to we could change that but I'm just gonna leave it as negative pi to pi. So I wish I could explain this math a little bit better to you. I know what sine, cosine, and tan are but I'm not sure what arctan or arctan2 are. So if you can't understand this, I'd recommend just learning how to set up this simple setup with these four nodes for now and not worrying about it too much. But if you can understand it and explain it, that's great. Uh, but you know, don't worry about it too much if you can't. This next part is a little bit easier though, and this is going to be uh, a way that we can actually set up a little mirror modifier here. Because this goes from 0 to 1, it's not going to be as useful. Uh, so I'm going to make this from 0 to 1 in the middle and then back to 0 for each section that's going to repeat 10 times here. And to do that, I just need three math nodes. So I'm going to duplicate this fraction three times. And let's change this first one to a subtract. The second one is going to be an absolute value. And then this third one is going to be a multiply. I'm going to set this first value at 0.5. The second one doesn't have a value. And this third one, I'm going to set it as 2, just like that. So this next step is a little bit easier to understand. So let's take a look. Uh, before we had those three nodes that make up the mirror modifier, uh, we just had this fraction here. Let's take a look at that again. So again, it's 0 with this black, and then 0.5 right here, and then 1. And when we subtract 0.5, now every value has 0.5 subtracted. So this used to be 0, it's now negative 0.5. This used to be 0.5, it's now 0. And this used to be 1, and it's now 0.5. When we do an absolute value, we can see that this shifts a little bit this used to be negative 0.5 and now it's positive 0.5. 
This used to be 0, it's still 0. This used to be positive 0.5, and it's still positive 0.5. So basically, the only value that changed were all these negative 0.5s, uh, which is every second one right here, is now a positive 0.5. And now we multiply it by 2, and then we get our 1s back. So now instead of being positive 0.5, those are all 1. And then these zeros are still 0, because 2 times 0 is still 0. So these three nodes, that's our mirror modifier. Don't worry too much if you can't understand it yet, but just try and make a bit more sense of it. Uh, it's certainly easier to understand for me than this first part here. But if, again, if you can't understand it, just try and memorize it for now and be able to recreate it if you need to. So this next part is going to involve building a circle. And I've built circles in the past, but this is a much simpler way. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to bring in a vector math node here. Set this, change it from add, change it to length just like this, and plug the object right into that vector there. Let's see what this looks like. There you go, it's already a circle. Um, it's a lot fewer nodes. This is a nice way to do it once you're used to it, but the reason I did it the way I did before is just to show you the actual math behind it. So anyways, we've got our circle here, and uh, let's go ahead and set up some subtract nodes as well. So let's go ahead and put this right after the length here, and let's go ahead and duplicate it and run this into the bottom of the subtract right there. And then we're going to go ahead and take this value right here and run it into the top there. And then let's go ahead and make one more. And uh, these are supposed to be subtract here. I'm just going to change those and leave this one at add. We're going to add both of these together, just like this. So let's view what this looks like here. Uh, it's this interesting, you know, array pattern here, white and black. I think I should explore this a bit more. It looks kind of cool. If you adjust this, it changes back and forth. We're going to set this at 0.1 for now. That looks pretty good. This next part, I think this is one of the coolest parts because it gives a huge amount of control over what our shapes look like. We're going to bring in an RGB curves node and put it on this bottom noodle, connecting to that bottom subtract. And once we do, we can move this curve around and really manipulate the shape um, it's, it's pretty cool. You know, you can spend a long time on this and come up with something pretty creative. I'm going to go to my, pretty much my original setup here, which was something like this here, and then bring this one way down, like that. Let's get rid of one of these as well, just by hitting this X, just like that. Let's go ahead and bring in one more RGB curves as well, and we're going to place it right before this subtract node up here. The same kind of thing. We can have a lot of control over this here. Um, I'm just going to show you what I set up uh, originally, but again, you can do whatever you want, you know. Something like this looks pretty good. And I'm going to bring this up again as well, just to make those legs a little bit wider. Maybe go like that. Looks pretty good. And let's do something in the middle here as well. Something like this. But, um, yeah, I like the look of that. That looks pretty good. You can experiment this, experiment around with this as much as you want, but I'm going to keep going with this pattern here. So I want to set it up where we mask this out, where all this black area is actually transparent, and the only part we can see is this white area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and bring in a color ramp. That's usually, I find, the easiest way to do this. So um, bring this white value down quite low. Let's bring it to 0.15. We can kind of see it's kind of feathery around the edges there, but most part, uh, for the most part, it's just completely white there. So then let's go ahead and bring this into a mixed shader. And we're going to make sure this is plugged into the factor, not into the shader one there. And let's go ahead and bring in a transparent shader. And uh, instead of this principled, let's use an emission shader, just like this. So let's think about this for a second. We want the black to be transparent, so let's plug the transparent into the bottom, or pardon me, the top socket there, and then the emission into the bottom socket there. And then let's see what that looks like. It doesn't look like much yet. We have to do one more step over here in the material properties. We need to change this blend mode to alpha blend. Uh, any of these alpha ones will work, but this alpha blend does some nice feathering along the edge that I want. So this is now transparent here, uh, but we don't have any color yet, so let's go ahead and set that up. Let's move everything over a little bit so we have a bit more room. And I'm going to bring in another color ramp and just put it right here and run this value into here again. And we're going to set up five values here in total. So three more plus the existing two here. 
the bottom one's going to be set at 0 and this top one's going to be set at 0 0.57 and then there's going to be three more values in the middle here so let's add those this first one's going to be at 0.34 this next one is going to be at 0.44 and then this last one is going to be at 0.5 just like that for the colors you can really choose whichever you want I'm going to show you which one I chose here I'm going to have to leave the bottom one as black Let's uh, set this top or this this second one here to kind of an olive color. Let's zoom out a little bit here, and uh, let's go something like this here. Sure, it looks good. And then this next one, let's set this as kind of a turquoise color, something like this. Make it a bit lighter, just like that. And then let's go ahead and set this third one to red, kind of like this. And then this last one, let's set this at another blue color maybe something like this. Then let's hook this up to our emission shader. We should see those colors coming through. Yeah, looks pretty good. Again, we can change these around however we want, but uh, I'm pretty happy with this. One thing I'm not happy with is the shape of the legs. So these are a little bit thick. I'm gonna bring this one in a little bit and just make those a little bit skinnier, just like that. If you're looking at this and thinking that, uh, you know, these are a little bit too straight and symmetrical, then you're thinking the same thing that I was thinking. And to uh, change those up, let's distort these uh, on the vector line with a noise texture. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in a noise texture and put it right here. And uh, it's way too much, as you can see. So I'm going to bring in a mix RGB. We're going to put this right after and plug object into color 2. And now you have this slider that can control how much distortion is being uh, you know, injected into this overall image here. So we're going to change this distortion scale to 3.9 leave all the other settings the same. We're going to change this factor to 0.89. So you can see if you view it from the top, all of a sudden this isn't in the center anymore. It's gone to the bottom left. Uh, we're going to need to fix that. The way that we fix it is we can duplicate this mix RGB, put it right here, and change this to subtract. And then we need to make sure that both of these factor numbers add up to 1. So this is 0.89. Let's change this to 0.11. And now we can see uh, it's not quite in the very center, but it's close enough. That seems to work. That's the way I'm doing it so far. So um, there's one problem with this, though. If we change this factor here, this one isn't synced up. Let's quickly do that with a value node. This is a super easy setup. I'm going to put it up here and add in one math node here. And we're going to plug this value right into that first factor. And let's change this to 0.89. Then let's go ahead and plug this into the second socket of this add and change this to subtract and set this top value to 1. So now we've got 1 minus whatever this is will come out of here. And then we'll plug that into the factor on that subtract. And now we've got this one value here that we can tweak that should basically even out. So I'm going to leave that at 0.89. That actually looks really cool at 0.79 to be honest, but let's do it at 0.89, make it a little bit more subtle. And you can see this is the larger noise texture that I want to do, but I also want a smaller noise texture. So I'm going to duplicate this one more and place it a little bit further ahead, uh, closer to the texture coordinate. And then let's duplicate this mix and plug object into color 2 on that mix as well. And then we're basically going to just turn this noise texture up to make it a smaller texture. Let's turn this to 18. And now we can see these smaller details on our noise there. Right now our jellyfish is still flat. I want to make it 3D. There's a couple different ways we could do that. We could use displacement. Uh, I'm going to show you the simple way just with like about you know a minute of modeling first. So let's go ahead and tab into edit mode. And I'm going to select this outer ring here. Let's turn on proportional editing. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit G and then Z and move this down. And then I can use the mouse wheel to control the fall off. So I can do something like this here. That looks pretty good and instantly we've got our 3D jellyfish. So let's say you didn't want to do that and uh, you wanted to do it with displacement, which by the way is not the way I did it for my final render because EV renders a lot faster than Cycles does. So that's just the way I chose to do it. But let's go ahead and try Cycles displacement here for the end of the video. So I'm gonna change to Cycles here and I think a good way to displace this is to use this circle here. And I'm gonna bring in a color ramp go ahead and place it right here run this into it and uh, let's take a look at what this looks like so pretty normal so far let's flip the color ramp 
So it's now going from black on the outside to white on the inside. And I'm going to change to GPU compute as well because I have a GPU. And then let's go ahead and for the material properties we need to come over here to the settings and then find where it says displacement. We need to change this to displacement and bump. It's set on bump only as a default. So displacement and bump. And then let's go ahead and bring in a displacement node just like this. We're going to plug I'm just going to pop that on there for now, but we're going to plug this into height just like that. So this is what the displacement looks like here. Let's plug into the preview again and just see what that looks like when the displacement is plugged into the actual displacement socket there. And uh, we're going to have a couple issues here. It looks like the fact that I didn't merge those vertices in the center initially is coming back to haunt me. So let's correct that. I'm going to use circle select here by pressing C and select those vertices in the middle. Uh, make sure to deselect everything first with AA. So I'm going to select it and uh, it looks like I've only got one vertice so let's go into wireframe mode here and select them all and then go F3 to search and then type in merge and at center. And now they're all merged together and let's see what that looks like if we go back into rendered mode. So we solved that part in the middle but there's still um, you know it's a very steep line there and we want it more of a curve so the way we can do that is actually bring in an RGB curves node for this as well we can uh, do some changes here and it looks like we lost the middle there um, let's change this a little bit but that actually looks really cool it looks like one of those C feathers or whatever they're called but uh, we can change that curve and get some pretty cool stuff like this looks like another deep sea creature that you wouldn't find anywhere else except for at the bottom of the ocean so I think that's a good place to stop this here. Hopefully you're able to follow along with everything and hopefully you can see how you would change this around and modify these settings to make it your own unique creation. Thanks for watching.